Have you ever wondered how mere raw materials are converted into some of the most sophisticated products on the planet? Have you ever wondered the tools, time and skills dedicated to such conversion processes? Thanks to advancements in technology, the manufacturing processes of these sophisticated products have been significantly improved. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we will be looking at some of the most amazing production processes of modern machines. Remember to hit the like, subscribe and notification button so you don't miss out on our educative content. Number 10. Blades Manufacturing Process A blades production process starts with a sample or sketch. Manufacturers are determined to either create a blade with a given configuration or recreate a blade with given dimensions to improve its physical and chemical properties. If a sample is sent, engineers would have to reverse engineer the product. The procedure requires the use of an optical comparator to create a digital model of the blade, a testing machine to decipher the hardness of the blade, and taking accurate physical readings of the blade. Blades are created using carbon alloy steel, spring steel, high-speed steel and tool steel. The metal input is cut into the desired shape using either high-pressurized water or lasers. Then the blade is placed in a large furnace of 1750 degrees Fahrenheit. The time the blade spends in the furnace is dependent on the type of its metal. Next, the heated blade is cooled until it reaches room temperature. Then it is tempered to achieve the desired hardness. The annealed blade is flattened and tensioned to remove inbuilt stresses in it. Its edges are ground to produce a sharply defined edge. Finally, the blades are shipped out and used. Number 9. Car Tire Production Process The most common material used in the tire industry is natural rubber. Tires are made out of synthetic rubber, carbon black, polybutadine, silica, sulfur, activators, antioxidants, antiozonants, and many other components. A tire is a conjunction of several raw materials put together on a drum and eventually cured in a press under the influence of heat and pressure. First, all materials required to create a piece of rubber compound are provided in appropriate proportions. The process is known as compounding. Next, the materials are worked on mechanically to create a homogeneous mixture. This process is known as mixing, and it requires the use of internal mixers to blend the materials in three to four stages to produce the desired result. Then we have component preparation. Once the rubber charge is shot into a chute after mixing, it is fed into a roller die by an extruding screw. After this, the extruded compound is vulcanized in a continuous oven, cooled down to stop the vulcanization action, and rolled up on a spool or divided into various lengths. A calendar is a family of several large rolls that compress rubber compounds into thin sheets. All of the components are combined onto a tire building drum. In the first phase of tire building, the inner liner, sidewalls, and body plies are wrapped around the drum. Then the beads are inserted and the assembly is inverted over the bead. The second phase involves the inflation of the tire's carcass and application of the belt package and tread. The tire mold is now cured by applying pressure to produce its final shape and heat to induce reactions between the rubber and other constituents. Lastly, for its final look, the tire undergoes tire uniformity measurement and tire balance measurement tests. Number 8. PVC Pipe Production Process PVC pipes are widely used for constructing water mains, sewerage pipes, and irrigation systems. Other than their versatility, the pipes are lightweight, durable, strong, and easy to implant. PVC pipes are final products of the extrusion of the raw material PVC, polyvinyl chloride, and other pipe extrusion processes. The raw PVC pellets or powder is fed into the PVC twin screw extruding die. Then the input is heated up to a high temperature till it melts. Then the molten form is extruded through a die to shape the mold into a pipe. The heated shaped pipe is cooled down and cut into suitable lengths. The casts are made to have the exact girths of that of the pipes. Chlorine solution is applied to the cut sections to prevent bacteria from growing on their surfaces during transport and use. After the coating is dried, the end of each pipe is sanded down with an abrasive. This action ensures the pipes are well balanced if they are placed vertically. 
Number 7. Spring Manufacturing Process The applications of springs vary, from our mattresses to huge industrial machines. Springs provide tension and compression with stored mechanical energy. They are made in four steps. Firstly, winding. Wire is fed into the designated mechanical spring equipment. The equipment straightens the wire from its original coil and recoils the straight wire into the required shape. Secondly, heat treating. The spring is then heated to a specific temperature for a particular period of time. The temperature and the time during which the spring is heated depend on the type and quantity of wire. The heated spring is cooled down and the cycle is repeated until the end product is satisfying. Thirdly, grinding. Here, the ends of the spring are flattened using a spring grinder. This is to ensure the spring can stand straight if it is polished vertically. After this is done, the spring dish feeds the spring into a box. Finally, finishing. The surface of the spring is coated to improve its physical and chemical properties. Number 6. Pencil Manufacturing Process Pencils are generally used for sketching, drawing, or writing notes. Huge piles of graphite and clay are poured into a massive drum. Inside the drum, there are huge rocks to crush the graphite and clay mixture into a smooth powder. The powder is mixed with water and continuously blended for up to three days. Next, a machine extracts water from the blended mixture. A grey sludge is left and placed in a cabinet where it dries and hardens for up to four days. The dry sludge is blended by huge wheels into a fine powder. The resulting powder is mixed with water to produce a smooth paste. The smooth paste is passed through metal pipes and ends up as thin rods. The rods are cut into pencil length sections, leads, and passed along a conveyor belt to dry. Once it is dried, the leads are placed in an oven to bake at a high temperature. This process makes the lead strong and smooth. Woods to house the leads are cut into wide slats. A thin layer of adhesive is used to the slats and a lead is put into each groove. Immediately, a second wide, grooved slat is used to encompass the lead with the first slat. As soon as the adhesive is dried, the slats pass through a cutting tool designed to shape the pencils. Then the pencil is sanded down with an abrasive and coated with several layers of paint. A heated metal stamp is pressed down on the pencil to indicate the name of the manufacturing company and a number to show the hardness of the pencil. A female is placed at the end of each pencil to house the eraser. Finally, the pencil is sharpened, packed and used. Number 5. Glass Bottle Manufacturing Process Glass bottles are used in the food and beverage industry, cosmetics industry and many other industries to package various products. Glass bottles are made out of silica, limestone, soda ash and recycled ready-to-use glass. The mixture of these components is heated till it becomes molten. Then, the gob of molten glass is passed through an individual section, an IS machine, where it is split into mini gobs of equal weight. The mini gobs are then passed into a forming machine, where a metal plunger creates enough pressure to create the neck and base shape of the glass bottle. The result is known as a parison. The parison is transported into the blow mold and heated up. When it becomes fluid enough, the parison is then worked on to add the extra shape of the glass. Once it is reheated to its blowing temperature, air is fed to shape the container. Number 4. Plastic Tank Manufacturing Process With the increasing need to store water all over the world, storage tanks need to be easy to install, durable, hygienic, lightweight, and resistant to corrosion. A precise amount of plastic is fed into a hollow mold. The mold is rotocasted about two principal axes at relatively low speeds. It is simultaneously heated up to ensure the plastic encompassed in the mold sticks to the mold and creates a monolithic coat against the mold surface. The rotocasting continues even while the mold cools so that the plastic can harden. Once it is suitably hard, the rotation and cooling is halted. Then the plastic end product is detached from the mold. Number 3. Wrench Manufacturing Process A wrench, sometimes called a spanner, is a mechanical tool that provides grip in transmitting torque to turn or stop objects from turning. Forging. Here the wrench takes its initial shape. Annealing. The product is annealed so that it becomes softer for the cutting. Rolling. 
The carbine materials attached to the wrench are removed in a rolling barrel. Punching and drawing. The wrench takes its final shape in this step. Polishing. The curved edges on the surface of the wrench are polished. Surface grinding. The flat surfaces of the wrench are grinded. Vibrating. In this step, the wrench is finely processed and electroplated. Assembling. The wrench is combined with other materials to produce a conventional wrench. Number 2. Copper Tube Production Process Copper tubes are widely used in plumbing and industrial air conditioning applications. They're strong, durable and protected against rust. Smelting Raw copper is fed into a large furnace. It is heated to more than 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. The raw copper becomes liquid and impurities can be removed from the raw copper. Formation Once the impurities are detached, the pure copper is moved into a cast shaped as a pipe. Once the molten pure copper is poured into the cast, it is left to cook and harden. Finishing The newly cast copper tubes are passed through a series of dies where they're cut into one or several desired shapes. Then, water or solvents are used to clean the end products. Number 1. Screw Manufacturing Process Screws are threaded fasteners. They're made out of carbon steel wire, stainless steel, aluminum alloys, nickel alloys, brass, etc. The carbon steel wire in a coil is fed into a straightening machine where it is set into a default straight line. The straightened wire is passed to an automatic equipment that splits the wire into specific lengths. Then, they are passed through a die where the tips of the screw blanks are made into desired shapes. Next, they are placed into a series of thread cutting dies from a vibrating hopper. The hopper ensures the blanks are correctly passed into the dies. Then, the blanks are cut using one of these three methods. The reciprocating die method. Here, two flattened dies are used to cut the screw thread. One of the flat dies is immobile and the other is reciprocating. The screw blank is passed through both dies. The center-less cylindrical die method. The screw blank is passed through two or three round dies to produce the desired screw thread. The planetary rotary die method. In this method, the screw blank is fed into several die cutting machines that roll around the blank. Here, the screw blank is kept stationary. You should note that all products, regardless of their size, shape, and production process, undergo quality control tests at the final stage. This action is to ensure that only the best products are released into the market for use. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in watching related videos. You can also like the video if you found it educative and interesting. If you have any reviews whatsoever on the video, feel free to drop a comment in the comment box below and turn on the notification feature to get updates from the channel. Until next time, 